Okay, so I will take you back to last year. I get pulled into a lot of recruiting meetings at Coldwell Banker, but I will never forget the day that I got a call saying the one and only Glenda Baker is considering coming to Coldwell Banker. And I remember walking into this meeting being like, do not fangirl. This is a professional meeting. And here we are, Coldwell Banker finally was excited to announce that Glenda is a part of our team. Glenda, you are an industry icon, you're a social media legend, you are an incredible businesswoman, and I could not be more excited to have you as part of the Global Banker family. And Sherry and I could not be more excited to finally, finally get you on the What Moves Her podcast. Welcome to our pod. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I am excited to be here on your podcast, but um, you know, it has almost been a year anniversary for me at Coldwell Banker. And anytime that somebody asks me, I always say, I wish I had made this move years ago. Um, it's been a wonderful move for me and you were definitely instrumental uh, in my decision making. Thank you. Well, we could not be happier to have you. Um, you have brought so much just wisdom and excitement and energy to the not even just national, but global stage for Global Banker. And uh, you definitely make us all better. So we are thrilled to have you. It's been Thank a year you so much. Not really fast. A year, yes. I, I actually remember, uh, you know, reading the news and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And then, of course, Glenda, you know, every time I see you, you've got a film crew. Uh, you've got, I, I want to be you. How can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sherry, I don't, I don't know if you want somebody following you around all the time. Um, we had a hurricane come through Atlanta last night Oof. and, uh, I have a huge hole in my guest bedroom Oof. upstairs and in my haste to kind of, you know, oh, my stars and stripes, get everything kind of figured out. I fell yep. into the bed. I've got this huge egg on my head. And so I'm hoping that I have put on enough makeup and adjusted my lighting well no, enough I, so that you guys have beautiful. no idea. No, you look beautiful. I, <laughs> so this is the hurricane that is circling around Florida, too, because uh, I'm in Toronto right now and I'm staying here until hurricane season is over. But uh, there has been damage, uh, that's for sure. Oh, wow. Do you, I didn't realize that you lived in Toronto. I live in Toronto part-time and uh, Palm Beach part-time. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I have a lot of friends in Toronto. I, I've heard great things about it. I've never been there, oh. um, but I, so I am time, excited I'll, to go visit. And Lindsay, too. Both of you come. I'll entertain you. I'm, <laughs> I will visit with you anytime, Sherry. So, Glenda, you are uh, a social media phenomenon. Um, everybody follows your cons. I mean, you come up on my feed and I like am locked in, but it, you know, this was relatively new to your journey. Like, how did you, how did you embrace social and, and what has been the impact? I think a lot of people dabble in it. Very few become the, at the level that you're at. Like, how did that happen? Uh, well, I had done video. I had kind of, you know, dabbled in video for a few years and just really, you know, post from the Porsche was probably the first kind of video series that I did that really kind of got some legs on it. Um, and what I found through my video journey from starting with Glenda Live and moving into uh, Post from the Porsche, and then also, you know, now my series Sugar and Spice Real Estate Advice, I wanted to be, I wanted it to look more professional, but not produced. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be and feel more professional, like when I was giving this advice. And I, and I love to give advice. And so um, that was kind of, I said, you know what, what about sugar and spice real estate advice? And so I started my this kind of video series on TikTok, uh, inspired from an agent in Delaware uh, who had 43,000 views on a video on TikTok. And I thought, if he can do TikTok, I can do TikTok. And I just started posting videos twice a week and they kind of took off. And at first they were for buyers, sellers, and investors. And then one day I said, you know, if I were a new agent, I would preview five houses a day, five days a week. I would know every house in my area. And all of a sudden, these all these real estate agents started following me. And so it was kind of crazy because all of a sudden it was like this snowball, like this cult effect 
where all these people started following. And it has been great for my business for buyers, sellers, and investors, but it's also been great for my best business for agent to agent referrals. Wow. And so, you know, TikTok, I mean, I have to admit, uh, I hate to even admit it publicly. I just can't seem to, you know, are you on it, Lindsay? I'm a TikTok junkie. It's well, the hours I spend on TikTok. I, I will not admit how many hours it is. Yes. Are you posting on I'm it? I'm not a great poster. I, my, I have a couple of uh, videos of my kids doing cool things in sports that have, I will never say that like Glenda's level of viral, but have gotten like a good amount of views. Um, but I'm definitely more of a watcher than a, a content yeah. creator. I, I watch it and, you know, certain aspects of it. But Glenda, like, give us some kind of grassroots uh, tactical tips on how to actually get on TikTok, how to start on TikTok, what to well, post. Well, I think that we as real estate agents, we feel like that buyers and sellers know all the stuff. Like, like we, when was the last time you sat down with a buyer, seller, investor, and just explained the process? Right now, there's so much confusion in real estate. There's never been a better opportunity for you, the agent, to control the narrative. So think through the real estate transaction and literally just make bite-sized videos about each piece of the transaction. Make make videos about things that you've seen and heard in the real world of real estate. I mean, I don't I think what's really crazy is that is that audiences think that we're walking around in stilettos <laughs> showing fifty million dollar <laughs> houses in the Hollywood Hills. And, you know, I'm not walking around in a septic field over here in Marietta, Georgia, in my stilettos. That's no. just not the reality. And I think that we do ourselves such a disservice because agents put just listed and just sold. And they put on there that they sold the house in four days with 40 offers, you know, $100,000 over the list price. Nothing diminishes your value more than making it look easy. I love that piece of it. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. let's we can clap for that. Because that's, <laughs> yes. that's like the standard marketing is like, use the data, how many days, you're ready. And like, that is basically at the core of your content. It's the real, real, right? Like that, you give raw, real, what is a day in the life of Glenda like? And some days those are real glamorous and some days you're stumbling through a septic field and you're cool with that. And I love that yeah. about you. Well, and I think that, that we owe it to our industry to help the consumer understand what it is we really do. How do we really bring value to the real estate transaction? And this is what is people's usually their largest single investment. And, and we are trusted with the keys to their home where they will do life. The homes that we sell are the backdrop of people's memories. And, and I really feel strongly that us as agents have this obligation to control the narrative and, and really take issue with the national broad brush strokes of real estate because real estate in Atlanta, Georgia is very different than real estate in Manhattan uh -huh. or Toronto or LA or New Jersey. And that's the thing is like, Locationally accurate data that they can't find on Google is your best friend. Sit down with your lender, sit down with your title partner, sit down with your warranty person. What, were, what was it that had the most warranty calls last year? You can't find that on Google. You're right. But if you sit down with your warranty person and say, just out of curiosity, like what were the most calls for warranties last year? What month were the most calls? Nobody knows that. And you're and you're showing, number one, why people should buy a home warranty, why people should ask for a home warranty, and what things it might cover and what things it might not cover. That's four different videos in the last five seconds that I gave y'all. I got it. Okay, so don't cram everything into uh, one video. That's, yeah. That is good advice. And be relevant in the information that you're providing to the end consumer. Don't assume that they they know everything because they don't. 
They don't. And I, and I think that, and, and TikTok gave me this feedback, was the reason that people stick with my page, the pe reason people bite into my content is because it's real, it's relatable, it's reliable, and it's relevant. And, and those things right there, they cause the audience to like trust you. And, and me, I, I film off camera. I like talk to my best friend. What would I tell my best friend? What would I tell my best client? And what would I tell my therapist about real estate makes the audience this fly on the wall and they can't look away. It's like they're getting to listen in on a conversation between me and one of those three people. And I think that that has really driven a lot of my engagement. I just um, I just did a panel at the Global Banker Global Luxury Summit in Miami, which was awesome. Um, and we were talking about the power of AI. And I'm thinking like one of the pieces of advice we gave to the audience was come up with ideas for content creation. Um, and I think a lot of the answers like a chat GBC would give you would probably be like all the things that you would expect an agent to probably go to market with. I feel like you're at a level beyond even what AI is considering. So my question to you is, you're outperforming artificial intelligence and content creation, but are you using it in your business? Do you see a value um, in integrating in any way? Because it's a hot topic right now. So for me, AI is an efficiency tool and nothing more because the real AI is authentic intelligence, not artificial intelligence. The thing about it is if, if you want to have a sustainable business model, you can't depend solely on artificial intelligence. If you can't authentically bring your value and articulate your value from face to face, belly to belly to the client, you can say whatever you want to say on video. You can deliver it like a pro. But the bottom line is, is that you're going to have to show up with authentic intelligence when you get face to face with the consumer. That's, I uh, couldn't yeah. agree more. I, you know, it's such great information here, but I, I want to take us in a slightly different direction for a few minutes. And what does Glenda Baker do when you're not selling real estate? Uh, love on my kids. Oh. Like <laughs> I love on my family. I want to be with my, I have, I have, uh, my children, Victoria, who works with me, my son, Lucas, I have my, my stepsons and my stepdaughters. I spend a lot of time with, and I have these two amazing grandbabies and they call me every morning and they're like, glitter, what are you doing? Glitter. And, and it's so funny. My little five-year-old grandson, if, if all caps, bold print, underlined with an explanation point had a voice, it would be his voice uh, because everything he says, he says with such enthusiasm, uh, glitter, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm putting my rollers in. Well, why are you late today? Because they call me every day at the same time and I have my routine and, and they see me getting ready and it's just like loving on them, the experiences of life, the ability to string moments of a lifetime together. That's what I do when I'm not selling real estate. But, but Sherry, I have to say like real estate is not a job for me. It is not work. I wake up every morning excited. I've never come home from the office and I'm like, oh, I had the longest day. I'm so exhausted. I am so, I love it so much. I'm so passionate about it that, you know, maybe I work all of the time, but it just never, ever feels like that because like I'm hanging out with my friends that are other real estate agents. I'm hanging out with my clients. My son, when he was in fourth grade, they, they had this thing and it said, what does your dad do for work? What does your mom do for work? And, and my son in fourth grade wrote, my mom doesn't work. She talks on the phone and sells houses to her friends. <laughs> and, and that's really what I do. Like, I just, I love, it. I love to talk about real estate and I'm so passionate about it. And right now we're in these like such tumultuous times yes. that it, like, it's, it's almost like a sport to talk about it. Everybody wants to talk about real estate. And so I've just loved being kind of in this time of confusion because it's given me the opportunity to provide clarity to my clients. I love it. And, uh, you know, I have to say 
that uh, glitter is the best grandma name ever. Yeah, Wouldn't you agree? my mom's Gaga to my kids. I'm like, I thought my mom was good. Glitter is the coolest name ever. I, I hope love you have, it. Like, I'm Nana. Well, I want to change mine to glitter. <laughs> Great. I, I'm telling you, you know, my daughter said, I, when I told my daughter, somebody said, what is your grandma name going to be? And I said, glitter. And my daughter was like, mom, he's not going to be able to say that. And I'm like, I don't need him to say it out of the womb. I just want when he gets to kindergarten to say, this is my grandma glitter. And my I friend don't. was like, what, you think that she's going to think you were a stripper? And I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> but I love sparkle. I always wear sequins. I you love do. glitter. I have this glitter makeup that I wear and I just, I don't know. I just want it. I just want it to be like joyful and what's more joyful and than like glitter, like you think like it lights up the world. And so I just, every time that my grandkids think about me. I want them to think about just this sparkle that I brought to their lives. You do bring sparkle everywhere you go. And if you can't see, she generally wears stars. I think you, I can kind of see a star popping out, but I do. I, it's easy to find you in a crowd, always. Yes, um, yes. I I always wear stars. My mom told me when I was a little girl, she's like, Pumpkin, you are a star dressed like one. I love and that. And so I just always, I, it's almost like I just feel like she's right here next to me when I wear them. My, I'm an only child. Me and my parents call ourselves the triangle. I now have my husband and my three boys. And I was like, well, we can't be the triangle. So we call ourselves the star. And we like are the five points on a star. And it's Aww. super meaningful. So when I met you, I was like, that's really cool. Um, women are not as comfortable as you are in your own skin. Like you are just, you are who you are. You bring them the, the humor, the real, were you always like that? Like when you were a kid, were you comfortable? Like, and if you weren't like, at what point in your life did you get to that point of comfort? And what advice do you have for people that want to be as comfortable as you are in your own skin? Cause I'm not there yet. Like I, I would love to have your persona. I'm getting there as I get older, but like you are something unique. How did you get there and when did it happen? Well, I, I was the last kid picked on the playground. I was super uncomfortable. I always wanted to fit in. I always wanted to be one of the popular girls. I always wanted to get picked and I never was. And it, it was just heartbreaking in my senior year i missed 40 days i wasn't even going to graduate from high school until my wow. mother explained to them that i was um i never took the sat i didn't go to college i wasn't in a sorority like i was always just a little bit different or a little too different and it wasn't until oh goodness gracious probably um, 2017. I, I stopped drinking in 2015. That really helped me a lot. I remember talking um, about because you know I drank because I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be comfortable. Um, you know I wanted to fit in, and and alcohol helped me cope. So I stopped drinking in 2015, and then in 2017. I um, went to an Unleash the Power Within in Newark, New Jersey with Tony Robbins. Oh my gosh. And, and I would probably say that that moment in time was a turning point um, for my life because it was in those moments that I decided that I wanted to live in the moment. And I, I reached this like point where it was just like, Nobody is taking care of me except me, so I really don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. And I just really had to get to that point. Um, and and I and I and I, I was talking to uh, someone yesterday, and I said it was then that I felt like I had made it, but not I had made it. I had made it big, but I had like made it through the valley, and I was like on the other side. And I really felt almost invincible um, from that point forward. From 2017 moving forward, I, it, ha it has been uh, a growth spurt uh, for me personally and professionally. And it has also brought me to this level of comfort and office authenticity that no one can steal from me. You know, when you use the word authenticity, I've got so many things that I could say. Uh, this is the third time today that we've heard the word authenticity uh, in our podcast recordings. And that just makes me so very happy because uh, it's an important 
it's just an important word, uh, you know, on so many levels. But I want to thank you for sharing your journey with alcohol. And, uh, you know, that it's important for listeners to hear that. And I was reading something uh, just yesterday that uh, uh, an article that talked about the fact that a lot of young people now are shunning alcohol altogether. And they are, um, you know, concentrating more on health and wellness and that journey which I think is just so important. And, you know, you saw it early and uh, decided to, you know, to go down that path, which I, I give you a lot of credit for. Well, thank you. You know, I, I realized when I was drinking, I was not performing at my highest level. And I think that that was part of the draw for me for sobriety is because like I knew the greatness that was within me, like I could feel it wanting to come out, but you just can't perform at your highest level if you're not well with yourself. And so for me, there were a lot of things that drove the sobriety, uh, but definitely wanting to be my best self. And I, I coined it. I, I stopped drinking in 2015 and I turned 50 in 2016. And my hashtag was my best self before 50. And it just really, I held onto that and it just really drove home how I wanted to show up and show out for for myself and for my family that's so beautiful yeah there's a lot of drinking in real estate like oh. let's just be honest you meet a client over a drink you're at a conference afterwards it's drink what is your advice for someone who is either like silver curious or someone that's maybe in the middle of their journey like what is your number one thing that keeps you on track that you could give to someone who may be in the middle of a struggle or just maybe recognizing that there even is a struggle and then we'll move from this but i think this is our industry in particular is very alcohol centric. Um, so how do you stay on the right path and how could you guide someone to do the same? Well, I was interviewed by Inman about women in real estate specific and their drinking habits. And what I would say to anyone who is sober curious or, you know, thinking that they're drinking too much, I would say you never feel better after you drink period. There's never ever anything that is better after you drink. And it really is like this temporary um, distortion of the truth and this temporary distortion of your life. And, and once you kind of resolve yourself that the only way to move through and move forward is to, you know, face your reality, uh, I think that that helped me a lot. And I think that, you know, alcohol helped me cope with, you know, the struggles that I was having in my marriage, the struggles that I was having in my life. And what I realized was it didn't help me. It just really just delayed the inevitable. So I think that it, fake it till you make it is such a misnomer. It's really face it till you make it. Oh, I love that. Love it. So, Glenda, you know, we're in um, interesting times right now over the past, let's say, 18 months or so. Um, give us some words of encouragement for the future. Our industry looks different today than, than it did um, two years ago and will continue to change. So what's your take on all of it? Oh, my gosh. I think it is an amazing time and an amazing opportunity to be in real estate. And that's not just a sound bite. I want to make sure that people hear me say this. The best of the best will get better and get paid more. And the people that are the riffraff of real estate will literally become extinct because you will have to be the best real estate agent moving forward to get paid. I absolutely love the transparency that is coming out in our industry, the opportunity for us to really show the value that we bring to the consumer and to the transaction. And I, I sat down with my team this week and I said, let's script through how we talk to buyers, 
how we talk to sellers. Because if we can script through and kind of find where the holes are in what we're saying, we can work together to articulate our value as a team, as an all-female team. We can work together to show people exactly why they should work with us. So for me, I think it's an amazing opportunity. I think that the transparency that is being forced into the industry is absolutely needed. You know, I wish (laughs) probably the thing that makes me the craziest is that the policies that are coming down, that are coming through, aren't really policies from people that are in the weeds. They're not being, they're, they they look good on paper. They're like that guy that looks fantastic on paper. And then when you meet him, he is a disaster. And 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 so that's why for me, I think that the intent behind the policy changes are great. But I think that the execution of those policy changes um, is 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 definitely a struggle for the people in the real world of real estate. So I hope, and I, as we get better at it, as we go through it, as people find out where the holes are, I think that it's going to be easier to kind of put everything together. Um, right now, we are just trying to stay very, very educated on everything that we can do to help the consumer. We're going to thank you for that. And I think it's uh, such a great answer. We're going to start to wrap. Um, you are like the queen of good advice. And I honestly wish we could do this every week because I'm just, I'm so drawn to everything that you say on every topic. You just, you are magnetic um, in energy and, and message. Advice to the next generation of women. So Sue Yannikoon founded What Moves Her to basically have a wisdom transfer, right? We are, we are grooming current and future leaders. What's your advice to the next generation of women in real estate or not, just as leaders in general? Don't be afraid to be bold. We have we have all had constantly had this narrative that it is better to be seen than heard as a woman, that we are there for the support. We are there as the backup. And I've got news for you in real estate. We are real estate. Women are real estate, period, bottom line. And if you look at every single company, the ones that are run by women are so foundationally strong, number one. And number two, the ones that are run by men, there isn't any single one of them that doesn't have a woman very close, right behind them, making sure that they're dotting the I and crossing the T. My mother always said, if you wanna talk about getting something done, talk to a man. But if you wanna get it done, talk to a woman. And that is my honest to God truth. Don't be afraid to be bold. Be strong in your position and remember that you don't have to be masculine to have power. You can use your feminine power. It is way stronger than that masculine power. That's amazing. So, um, Glenda, can I hang out with you at the next conference? I would love, love, love to see you. Hey, thank you. Definitely. Um, I mean, if you don't get chills listening to Glenda, then I think your heartbeat is like missing. Because every time I talk to her, I'm like, ooh. Gives me chills. And you know, um, before we close, you made such a good point. Um, and we make it a point with what moves her. It's not like an all female, like male haters club. It's that no. collaboration that's so important. Like we had Ryan Schneider, who was our CEO of our parent company, and he said the same thing. He's like, I want the very best people at the table. And watching the way that him and Sue Yannicone run our company in lockstep together yeah. is such a good demonstration of how um they balance each other, they respect each other, they collaborate. Um, I know within our Anywhere companies, we're really inspired by that mutual respect and collaboration. And it's very obvious why we're so successful because of it. Yeah, I think I think that that's one thing about this company and, and definitely a driver to my selection was that they really were committed to putting the best person in their position. And, and to me, that was such a driver, but also it is very female driven and real estate is female driven. So I, I love the fact that we are at the right tables in the best seats and I want to do everything I can to make sure that we stay there. Thank well, you. And we want to do everything that we can to support you, Glenda. Thank you so much for your time today. It was incredible. 
Thank you, ladies.